today we're going to be looking at the temporary differences and resulting deferred tax movements that arise from prepaid expenses. So as always, let's have a look at a little illustration. So let's pretend we're working with a rent expense and you've come up to December and because you're going to be on holiday in January, your year end is December, but you pay the January rent in advance. So you land up with a debit to a prepaid rent, prepaid rent expense, which is a statement of financial position account. It's an asset. You will only realize those future economic benefits in January when you actually utilize or occupy that office building, etc. And obviously the credit is the payment. So let's say the rent is 100,000. So you've paid 100,000 in advance, you have a future economic benefit, therefore a asset. So that is your current year prepayment. Okay, now last year you did the exact same thing. You went debit prepaid expense credit bank with 90,000. So what happens in the current year is your prior year prepayment now actually gets utilized as an expense in the current year. So you are then going to go debit expense rent expense for this example in profit and loss and you are going to clear out that asset the prepaid expense that was in statement of financial position and let's say last year's prepaid expense was 90,000 resulting in a expense in the current year of 90,000 for the January rental. So overall here, we need to now look at what does the tax authority look at this scenario as? So for instance, in majority of the you know, developed and developing worlds, your tax authorities work on the earlier of accrual or invoice. Okay, sorry, accrual or cash payment. So over here, you will get the deduction of 100,000 when you make the payment of 100,000. Even though at that point, there has been nothing going through profit and loss. So nothing in profit and loss. So therefore the PBT, profit before tax, has not been affected. In the following year, however, you now have a deduction. So an expense that will reduce profit before tax. Will the tax authority give you a second deduction? Remember, he gave you that 90,000 deduction last year when you made the payment. At this point, the tax authority will not give you another deduction. That's just right there, no second tax deduction. So here I've got a temporary difference that's going to result in deferred tax because the tax deduction and the accounting deduction are just in different periods. So what do I need to do? Let's change this around a little bit and have a look at the deferred tax balance calculation first. Okay, with well, a statement of financial position calc. And I'm going to do my normal headings, the carrying amount, the future economic benefits, the tax base, any future tax deductions. The difference between the two would be my taxable or deductible temporary difference. And that temporary difference will give rise to a deferred tax balance at a 28% tax rate. So let's do our opening balance calc first. And we're going to call that a prepaid expense, excuse me, abbreviating here, we're running out of space. So the opening balance last year, therefore this year's opening balance was 90,000 as a future economic benefit. 
Are there any future tax deductions? Remember, the tax base of an asset equals future tax deductions. There are no future tax deductions on this. SAS, or the tax authority, has already given you the tax deduction in the prior year when you made the payment. So that equals nil. Therefore, the tax base is nil. Future income of 90, well, a future benefit of 90 less zero future tax deductions gives me a 90,000 taxable temporary difference, which will give rise to a 25,200 deferred tax liability, a future tax payment. The closing balance for this prepaid expense at the end of the year I've got a hundred thousand prepaid expense tax base as explained above is zero temporary difference now again is a hundred thousand deferred tax liability on that taxable temporary difference of a hundred thousand is twenty eight thousand deferred tax liability should be getting the hang of this by now we now need to do the movement so what have I done here? I've got an increase in a liability from, 20, from 25, 200 to 28,000. So how do I increase a liability? Credit, deferred tax, financial position, 2,800. The other side of this is going to be a debit deferred tax. I'm going to take it to profit and loss because the underlying difference went through profit and loss. Again, 2,800. So that's the movement or deferred tax expense. So deferred tax expense calculation. What's the other side of this coin? Whenever there's a statement of financial position movement, there must be a statement of profit and loss and other comprehensive income movement. That I'm going to pick up from my current tax calculation. So my current tax comp, always start that with profit before tax. I have not given you that figure, so we'll put some X's in. There's no permanent differences here, no capital gains, no foreign income. So I can go straight into my movements in temporary differences, the normal movements in temporary differences. In this scenario, I'm now going to have my prepaid expense. This is more of a tax adjustment than an accounting reversal, but let's go through this. The current year, if you remember my journal, I went debit prepaid expense credit bank. So the current year, the profit and loss effect is zero. There was no expense. It went debit asset, credit asset, debit prepaid expense, credit bank. But the tax authority says, well, you paid 100000 therefore you get 100000 deduction. So that's the tax effect, if you want to call it that. That's the tax deduction. But for accounting, what happened? In the current year, I took last year's figure of 90000 out of prepaid expense and went debit expense, profit and loss, credit, prepaid expense, financial position. So that 90000 was an expense in my profit before tax. I need to reverse it out and I need to add that back. The difference between the two is a negative 10,000. Add up and you will get your taxable income. Again, you don't have enough information so we're just going to put XXX. What I do want us just to kind of remember is that this 10,000 over here is what? A taxable temporary difference. Why do I say it's taxable? Well, we've decreased taxable income in the current year. When it reverses out in the future, it will increase taxable income. If you increase taxable income, there will be an increase in tax payable. Therefore, it is a taxable temporary difference movement. So taxable temporary difference movement. And if I take that 10,000, and I times it by 28% to get the deferred tax effect, I'm going to land up with my proof for my deferred tax journal. 
So that proof would be 10,000 times 28%, 2,800. Debit, credit, 2,800. I said it's a taxable temporary difference. Therefore, it's going to result in a future tax payment. And that's going to mean a deferred tax liability movement. Therefore, I credit deferred tax financial position, make the liability bigger on the credit side. The opposite side of the journal, well, the underlying movement went through profit and loss. Therefore, deferred tax expense will go through profit and loss. Now, please, this is a proof of the prior journal. So let's have a look. I've gone debit, profit and loss, credit financial position, 2,800. In my deferred tax movement journal from the balance side, I went debit, profit and loss, credit financial position, 2,800. It's a perfect fit. And last but not least, you'll need to disclose this in the notes to the financial statements. As always, we're going to have our income tax expense note. made up of major components of income tax expense. And what are those major components? Those are current tax expense. And current tax expense in this scenario was, well, we don't know, we're gonna put XXS. And then deferred tax expense. Well, that is gonna be my Movements in temporary differences normal, which we've just journalized as 2,800. That 2,800, if I go back to my deferred tax movement journal, I debited profit and loss. If I debit a deferred tax expense, expenses get bigger on the debit side. So therefore that is a positive in this deferred tax expense note. I would then add up and get my total tax expense. No need for a tax rate recon here because, well, the deferred tax versus the current tax added together both give you profit before tax times 28%. Not always the case, but very simplified example. Great, thank you very much.